Okay, so here we go with an initial look at the VW Golf GTI from Revell, Germany, 124 scale. I was uh, pretty excited when I, I saw this kit. The first car I ever drove was actually a 1984 uh, VW Rabbit, which of course was the American version of the VW Golf. Um, it was not a GTI, but um, still was a lot of fun to drive. Had a stick shift in there. Great little car. Uh, unfortunately, it had a rust issue and rapidly dissolved over my four years of college and I uh, had to say goodbye to it. But still, piece of automotive history here and happy to see that this kit came out. Uh, it's a typical Revell Germany packaging, great background, side opening box, unlike your typical Revell America kits, which have more of the uh, cubicle lift the top off. See on the back of the box, they have some nice info about the kit, the skill level. But let's look inside. So I'm not big on doing a whole look at all the different pieces because when you first open the kit, of course, everything is pretty much the same color and you really can't appreciate too much until the painting is done. But a few things I would like to point out, starting with instruction manual. Uh, Revell Germany does a real nice job with their manuals. They are great at giving you a little bit of history on the vehicle. Uh, because it is Revell Germany, there's a whole bunch of German, but there is a nice English section here to give you a little history on the background of what you're building. As far as the instructions themselves, they give you all the descriptions of your little icons that you come across, a sprue map, which is pretty neat. Uh, color guide which seems long because again the colors are listed in all sorts of different languages uh, what I tend to do with these pages is just photocopy it so I can keep it to the side so while they work I don't have to flip back and forth through the pages and then once assembly begins we'll jump ahead here through a few pages just to give you a sample uh, very clear they tend to break down the assembly into a lot more simple steps Whereas something you might see on, a, on an AMT model, for example, they'll have you do a bunch of things in one step and the whole assembly may be like eight or ten steps. Uh, Revell Germany tends to go into maybe two or three pieces per step, which draws out the production, but the illustrations are very good for each step, as you can see here. Very clear as to where decals are supposed to go, your painting markations so that's all very nice and at the end you get a nice graphic of the finished product again showing you exterior for decals paint and whatnot now since this is a VW Golf it's not some crazy thing with all sorts of racing stickers or whatnot but uh, if you do something a little more detailed then or something with more uh, aesthetic features to it this is real handy. Uh, Revell America kits also come with a page like this. So again, always something nice to have. So let's look at some plastic. As you can see, everything is gray. Uh, this is the way the kit comes. There is no chrome. Again, it's a VW Golf, nothing fancy. But the reason I'm doing this is the detail on this kit, the molding detail, is very fine, and it's it's really something to be appreciated. So, quick example, looking at the motor. You can see all the little lines and dentations just on this one sprue. Really well done. A lot to work with there. Here are some interior pieces, the door panels. You can see all the lines for the insets. Uh, what's neat with this kit, you get two different dashboards for left-hand drive, right-hand drive for you people who like to drive the British way. Otherwise, just a whole nice slew of parts. You get some nice rubber tires, good tread pattern. The molds are clean. There is almost no flash. Um, so this should go together real well. And next time... When I come back, we'll have some sprue painting done, as I usually do. Uh, body, of course, will be spray painted. 
it is molded in gray it's a very nice representation of the golf body i am actually going to do this one in white um, my first car my, my vw rabbit was actually a light blue with a dark blue interior but my grandfather in germany had a vw golf not the gti version a regular uh, vw golf white body black interior which I think overall is much more representative of what you would see in this car. So I'm going to go with that and build it up from there. So until next time, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here we go to take a look at our sprue painting. Uh, I've done as much detail paint as I can at this point. Uh, next step will be to start some of the sub-assemblies and then go ahead and spray painting some of the body parts. Um, doing the model this way, which is a little bit of out of sequence from the instructions, so that I can have my sub-assemblies done, clear out some of the part sprues, and then be able to paint the body areas, spray paint them white. Um, so then that will all go together at that point. Um, as I've said before, there are a lot of nice fine detail on these parts. Uh, one of the things I like about painting on the sprues is you really get to appreciate as you do your brushwork, all the fine detail that they provide you with the castings. So particularly engine parts, uh, some of the interior parts or engine pieces. Uh, wheels things like that so let's take a closer look at some of these sprues so we'll take a look at some engine parts paint it up now and they look pretty good so there will of course be some touch-ups as they come off the sprues and go into assembly uh, the dashboard came up real nice uh, this model like a lot of newer kits they give you decals for all your gauges and dash detail, which makes life a lot easier. Small decals to work with, but um, definitely get more detail than you could trying to pick it out with a brush. So that's a nice thing to have. So that's where it's at now. We also, just to give a little more, some of the interior details, little handholds for the B-pillars. Uh, we even have seat belt clips for the between the front seats. So lots of good detail to work with on this kit. So as I said, next step will be to go into the sub-assemblies. I can do the engine, most of the interior, the wheels before I have to get to a point where spray painting the body panels. Obviously we have the body, the hood, firewall, the engine compartment, front and rear lower fascia. So those parts will be sprayed, but after a lot of the rest of the parts have been cleared out on the sub-assemblies. So that will be the next step and come back after that. Okay, so here we are well into the build of the 124th Revell Golf GTI. Now, as you can see, I've done a few sub-assemblies here done some sprue painting this is basically what's left of the kit at this point uh, as far as the underbody and suspension goes um, pretty much just black semi-gloss black flat black to mix that in pretty straightforward uh, the engine bay is a very nice sub-assembly we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, dashboard came together very well interior they gave these great decals for the seat pattern those came out very nice and body I just did the spray paint I have the windows in and did the window trim so still quite a bit of work to do with that obviously now one thing I will say so far with this kit the fit of the parts is very precise which is a good thing uh, however that means particularly with the engine bay when you get into the smaller bits of the assembly it can take a little fiddling to get everything set just right so it does require a little patience uh, based on that fact I would not say that this is a kit for uh, a first time effort because it might lead to some frustration that said with a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice 
test fitting always so important the pieces will come together and you end up with some really nice assemblies so let's take a look at a little bit of what is here so we'll start off with this nice engine bay now wait for the camera to focus you can see there is a lot of nice detail in there there we go all the little hoses fluid chambers all rendered all well done the decals for the battery add a nice little touch of realism and very happy with the way that came out um, very tight working inside that engine bay so as these pieces were going together like I said it will require a little bit of patience and just stick with it and you end up with a real nice finished product dashboard pretty straightforward but with a semi gloss and some flat black details they give some nice gauge decals for the dashboard so that came out well pretty happy with that I added the red stripe for a little effect in there dress it up a little bit this is supposed to be a GTI after a uh, GTI after all interior tub lots of nice detail in there again there are some small pieces they give you as an option the buckle releases uh, they were a little tricky to put in definitely had to break out the tweezers for that one but once in there it, it is a nice detail that you don't often see on a 24 scale model so I was happy to have that in there definitely worth the effort uh, detail on the inside door panels I having had the car I do remember there was a body color sheet metal on the inside of those doors and since I went with a white for the body color I stuck with maintaining that white on those door panels and highlighted some details maintained the uh, red stripe inset from the dashboard give it a little bit of a sporty look yeah okay if we're cruising down the Autobahn so like I said it's all coming together really nice uh, very happy with the kit so far so next thing is to get the underbody put together and then these assemblies will go together one two three and next time we should have much more of a finished car I will include some close-up pictures of the engine bay so you can get a better look at that and that's it for now Okay, so we're back with some more construction. The major sub-assemblies are all together now, so we actually have what looks like a car. There we go. Classic VW rabbit slash golf shape. Um, what I wanted to show was how this all goes together. Uh, it is a very nice fit once it's all done. When you see the various angles here there are no big gaps the interior sides come up nice to the inside of the car again those are body color because in the actual car that's the way it was but dashboard everything mates up evenly which is always a little nerve-wracking when putting these cars together because in the instruction manual they just show a nice simple arrow and everything just works and of course real life can be quite a bit different but on this kit it did go together very well uh, the only catch is when fitting the chassis pan into the body uh, the instructions show you to put the engine end first followed by the rear end of the car which is the proper way to do it but it does take some finagling to get this in here the 
engine uh, bay assembly attaches to the body pan, the chassis pan first then you have to fit the whole thing in there and it is quite a tight fit getting in there so when I was doing mine uh, I started out doing what I thought would be my test fit and it wound up to be my final fit because once I got it in there I was not too inclined to take it back out but good news is there are two long seams here along where the curvature of the body meets the chassis pan so it's a great glue surface uh, some rubber bands let it sit overnight and it's together and it's not coming apart so you can also see some of the uh, underbody detail obviously I have to put the muffler still in uh, because this uh, was a unibody car you don't have a, a terrible amount of detail going on there there's obviously no uh, ladder frame holding it all together but we do have some good suspension detail the front tires are positionable on this model you get a little bit of deflection you can do there so for display just give a few more looks at it now obviously there's a lot more work to be done on the body I put the glass in I did the weather stripping the door outline but uh, door handles gas cap mirrors all that all has to go on uh, I did do a wash for the um, the grill on the hood so that came out okay and just to give you a glimpse under the hood see the engine bay even though it mounts to the chassis pan sits in there nice and tight to the fenders of the car so it really does look like that all came as a nice assembly now front fascia rear fascia have to go on the car uh, the trunk wouldn't work too well with a big hole like that <laughs> so I already test fitted those pieces and they actually fit in uh, real smooth they, they just drop right in grill the front fascia and then in, for the rear the uh, upper fascia where the it's not really a fascia it's the, the back of the body where the uh, tail lights will go and then the rear fascia uh, I also left out my little pin vise drill uh, one thing to note if you're going to build this model you absolutely will need one of these and be careful before doing the sub-assembly uh, attachments here that you drill out for your windshield wipers and your side mirrors because those holes did not come uh, done on the body oddly enough the body was cast with the wiper mounts for the uh, left side British driving version which I'm not building I'm building the good old-fashioned uh, left drive American and European version so I'm gonna have to do a little putty repair on those two holes and cover them up but otherwise that all coming along nicely the other thing I wanted to show for tail lights they are molded in clear glass a little bit closer here and I just wanted to talk for a minute about detailing tail lights signal lights you have two options you can do two two main options that I know of you can paint the back sides of them which is what I like to do or you can buy a set of transparent paints and paint them from the front side uh, that will probably give you a little bit of a better finish but then you have to have another set of paints and as paints sit then they clog and you have to replace them so I find it works very well if you just flip your clear parts around paint the colors on the inside and then from the outside you will still have the sheen of the clear part but you will have the color in there and once you go and do a little detailing for let's say weather stripping on the light housings as I did here it will all look good once it's put in on a larger scale model this will become uh, rather obvious but on some larger scale models you will get uh, your color glass will be actually molded in the correct color so that's always a nice feature so that's where it's at for now and I'm going to move ahead 
and finish this up. All right, so we have the car, or VW uh, Golf GTI is basically built at this point. However, uh, because I'm trying to build something that is sort of a blend between um, different models of the car that I've known and one that I owned, uh, I wanted to really bring back uh, a memory from the car I had had because it had louvers down the back window which was, uh, for better or worse, <laughs> something that really uh, set my car apart because I never saw another uh, rabbit slash golf with uh, louvers on the back. Uh, related to the uh, rabbit slash golf design was the uh, Scirocco, uh, which was basically the rabbit body style except with a little more rake on the front windshield and a more sloping roof so it was a more more uh, sport type car design so obviously uh, there are no louvers that come for the back window with the kit so it was time to do some fabrication so I thought I'd show you how I went about doing that now the first thing to keep in mind is the louvers sit basically parallel to the ground to do that we need to measure the angle of the back window so I took out my small carpenter square set this back a little bit so now I have 90 degrees to the ground so if I measure from here over to the window that will give me that angle off of center so a little protractor and this I just opened up until I was flush with the window and flipping it over there is the angle uh, it happens to be depending uh, I did a couple of measurements and the average measurement I got was actually 47 degrees so with that I was now able to cut an angle on the supports I would have to make so that the louvers would then sit parallel to the ground and to make all of my parts I use some uh, styrene sheet stock styrene sheet this is 0.02 inch or 0.5 millimeter thickness uh, it may actually be if you really want to go scale crazy a little thicker than uh, would really correspond to the actual real life louvers however I felt this was a good blend between a thickness that would be easy to cut and yet would still be uh, stable enough to work with so first thing I did was to cut my two support brackets and you can see those right here now on them I drew the 47 degree angle so I had those these are the steps where the louvers will sit and then the finished bracket when it's time to mount them on the car will sit like so and I'll move it over so you can see the contrast on the window and then the louvers will sit on top of that so for those two pieces I just drew out a small rectangle I drew the angles and I came in and cut that and how I did that I will talk about at the end just a few simple tools now for the louvers themselves the first thing I had to do was remove the rear windshield wiper from the kit you notice the rear window is not square and certainly the outline along the trunk is trapezoidal in form so I went back and got my carpenter square that I used before to measure the angle to get my right angle I measured across the top of the window and then across the bottom of the indentation for the trunklet and that gave me the measurements for my trapezoid which I scribbled down on my styrene sheet and then you can see the outline of what I had cut 
Once I measured the trapezoid, I decided to go with five louvers because that seemed to be a workable number at this scale. I just divided the vertical height to get my five slats. I drew my lines, again using my uh, straight edge, and then proceeded to cut those out. So that gave me what we see here. Now, these are the louvers after they're all done. When I originally cut them out, you will see the original trapezoidal form. Okay, and there we go. So there they were, cut out the trapezoid, separated them. Now I numbered them so I could keep the sequence in mind with one being the top. Now when it came time to actually cut the little slots for them to fit on the support runners, I actually did it opposite because when the louvers go on the car, if I can pick one of them up, <laughs> we'll go with this guy. Don't actually want the angle coming out like that. You want the angle to angle in. So convex or concave depending how you want to do your perspective. So although they were cut out in this order, they will actually mount in the opposite order like so. Okay, with this being the top of the car and this being the bottom of the trunk lid. And the brackets will go underneath. These are slotted and they will fit right in. So the last thing to figure out was how to mount all of this to the car. So what I did, I got some of my stock styrene square, square stock. And using the splining tool, I went in and I'll see if we can get it to focus on it because they are very tiny. There we go a little bit. I'll have some JPEGs when this is over to uh, show some of the more detail. But I cut four small blocks after, after, key point, splining a channel in them so that the brackets can sit in those grooves. They will be glued together. And then I will have four mounting points sitting on the rear window. Now the actual louvers attached to the surround of the window on the car, but they had four felt bumpers that sat on the window. So seeing those, the backs of these, the four white squares on the window, actually won't be inaccurate because that's how it looked from inside the car anyway. Once I have that all sided up, I may or may not reattach the rear wiper blade. Uh, my car actually did not have a rear wiper, which was one of the reasons why the louvers came in real handy. Now, as far as the tools that were needed to do this job, here we go. Uh, tweezers, because some of this stuff was real tiny to make it easier to handle. Splining tool. Uh, you can pick one of these up from uh, hobby websites. They're only about $10. You can use these for a number of different things. Uh, they're real handy for scribing in groove lines on cars, planes, ships, anything of the sort. But for thin styrene sheet, it also works really well for cutting through. The advantage with the splining tool versus the exacto knife blade for making a channel is the exacto knife blade as you cut will actually create a little bit of a furrow around the cut line. The splining tool just digs out a channel so that you have a U-shaped indentation, which is what you want. Uh, less cleanup. The exacto tool for some of the cutting and diagonal cutters as well for doing the little slot cuts. I cut those on turning it one, two, and then came in with the point of the exacto knife and just popped out the little inserts. Again, I'll have um, some JPEGs at the end of this for a little more detail. So next thing will be to assemble it. Then it will get painted flat black. Give it a quick spray. And then onto the car it goes. So hopefully that will look good. 
and I will leave this segment of the video in or it will come out crappy and you won't see them. <laughs> so <laughs> we shall see. But uh, so just really to give you an idea that um, and I've spent about say an hour or so working to get to this point. So not a, a terrible, uh, terribly complex or lengthy project to do. But you are working with small parts. Be patient. Take your time. And it will all work out. So, time to paint and assemble. And we will see how this all looks when it's done. Okay, and here we are with the final build reveal for the Ravel 124th VW Golf GTI. And here we are. Now, before we take a closer look at this Golf, we're going to take a look at this Rabbit. That's right. Going all the way back in the time machine to 1990. This was my uh, first car, my, my trusty VW Rabbit. Um, as I said earlier in the video, this, you know, this was a fun little machine, had a manual gearbox, you know, just, uh, just, a, just a real fun car. I had a lot of good memories with this. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, rust bug got to it. And, um, you know, usually when people say that when cars rust, they disintegrate. I said earlier in this uh, build video, that this car kind of dissolved on me and uh that really wasn't a, a misuse of a word because um when it rained you know i'd find all sorts of stuff underneath my car from the the water washing out uh, little rust particles and uh it was it was pretty unreal how uh unfortunately it, it succumbed um Apparently there are a couple of years where uh, VW had used some imported uh, steel and that steel was not of the best quality and that was the source of the uh, big rust problems. Uh, my model year car happened to be one of those unfortunate uh, model years. So, um, you know, it, it gave me uh, four years of uh, commuting to college. Uh, did its job reliably like I said it was, had a lot of fun with the car but unfortunately um, you know it, it, it had this issue and had to say goodbye to it uh, this picture actually uh, in the next uh, pictures I'm going to show actually took these um, God, it was probably a couple of weeks maybe a month before I had bought uh, my first brand new car which had been a uh, Nissan Sentra you know, also with the manual gearbox, another another fun little machine. Um, so here's the front, and obviously this was in the states, so this is the Rabbit version. It has the U.S. bumper, uh, the U.S. Uh, required signal light at the end. Uh, it has a little uh, matte finish on the uh, fender here. Uh, the GTIs typically had a full black. Um, plastic overlay on the fender flare designed into the body uh, I took a few liberties with the uh, final aesthetics of the kit as uh, you may have noticed already but certainly we'll see in a moment but moving on so this is uh, you know a rear view of the car and again you can see the uh, US spec uh, rear signal light US spec rear bumpers uh, you'll notice here the chrome um, lug nut covers which uh, were not on the, uh, to the best of my recall, were not part of the uh, European uh, package of the car. They had the exposed uh, lug nuts. But the American version had the little caps on there. Uh, and the louvers that I had on the back of my, my window. So that I tried to uh, replicate for this build. And I had said in the uh, last segment that if uh, it came out crappy, well... 
that would go on the editing floor but uh, they didn't and I'm pretty happy with the way it came out and we'll see those in a minute and just looking inside the car I mentioned earlier when I was going over the painting how you did have on these cars uh, actual body sheet metal on the top of the door sills running along the inside of the car which I did uh, replicate painting here and there was my uh, you know faux leather uh, steering wheel wrap that I had put on there um, why at this point I, I really don't even know <laughs> but uh, help me find a steering wheel in the dark <laughs> uh, a little Hamburg flag hanging off the one of the uh, vent knobs there but um, I did and you would notice earlier I did paint the steering wheel a similar color for this build and that was to uh, try to replicate that detail so uh, enough of memory lane let's go to the build so that was uh, 1990 full scale. This is uh, 2020, 124 scale. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Now I did this car in white. I had mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, getting back to some of the compromises I did with this build between uh, what the car would actually be and what I wanted to uh, represent with the build uh, was sort of a blending between um, the car I had had uh, the car my uh, grandfather had in Germany, which was a white four-door rabbit, and the actual GTI version of the Golf that came as the focus of this kit. So, a uh, few obvious things off the bat. The uh, louvers, there they are. They came together pretty well. Um, like the way they looked, so on they went, and... Uh, I think that's a pretty unique thing. It certainly was when I was driving around with them. Um, I did not paint the fender flares. I felt there was, with the uh, white body, there was enough white and black going on. Uh, aesthetically, I just decided uh, not to do that. Um, I put on the lug nut caps, which again would be an American uh, US spec, but I did not use the... Uh, tail uh the uh, tail reflectors side reflectors here uh, the kit does in fact come with those parts they're not referenced anywhere in the instructions but uh, you will find the parts on the sprues for those reflectors uh, you get a a small um, gray molded uh, rectangular plate which would go to the body and then a small uh, piece of clear that you would have to paint uh, orange for the reflector which would go onto that um, Again, you know, in, in the spirit of trying to blend what I was representing here, I just decided to uh, leave them off. It does come, which was kind of curious, with a U.S. spec front bumper, but not a U.S. spec rear bumper. So, not quite sure what the thinking was there. But in any event, um, I went with both the, the European uh, slimline bumpers and uh, you know they they look just fine that's what was on the uh the european version of the car so there we go got my uh tan steering wheel in there I'll take a little bit of a closer look on, on the interior um it's a little hard to capture this on the camera because of the black interior and the the white outside but um you know i'm not working with a professional lighting box here so uh got to do what you can uh, the underbody detail was pretty nice. Interior detail on this kit was uh, very good. As I had said from the very beginning, all the molding quality was, was excellent. Uh, it is, uh, I think, a kit for someone who maybe is, has uh, a few assemblies under their belt. Um, the, not because there is any uh, specific problem with assembling the kit, but because of the precision of the fit, there are some uh, very small parts. Uh, placement of the parts is uh, rather exacting. So when you assemble it, you have to be spot on. That said, uh, as long as you are spot on, it goes together uh, beautifully. You know, there, there are no misalignments. There, there's no wiggle, no slop, no, no lack of indicator pins, anything like that. So a really well-engineered kit from... Uh, the building perspective uh, all the glass went in no problem 
And uh, one of the nice things when you have a kit that goes together really well, it does make it easier if you want to do some kind of uh, addition or modification. It, it can make your life a little bit easier because you'll have uh, true lines to work with rather than trying to uh, blend it and harmonize between things that are kind of uh, going a, a number of different directions and trying to uh, you know find a middle ground uh, between all of that and the engine compartment uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, that that's a real uh, highlight on this kit uh, the, the engine is really nice reproduction of the of the engine the motor bay components uh, the engine bay components sorry and uh, a lot of real nice detail under there so uh, really, really good job on that too uh, from Ravel. So, as the car comes around, I'm going to pick this up and try to get a little light into that interior. And you can see the pattern on the seats. I did some close ups on this interior during the build. You can see that tan steering wheel, uh, again, now highlighted against the seat pattern. And turning it around, uh, if we can get a little light in there, the dashboard, uh, again, I, I showed that close up on some earlier segments. Uh, we have our underbody, again, this, the, the Golf uh, is a unibody construction, so there's not a whole lot going on down here, but what it does have is nicely uh, done on the kit. We do have positioning wheels. Uh, the GTI did come with a little front air dam and that is part of the kit I have my uh, Deutschland uh, euro plates on there the little V for Deutschland so this car came came uh, right right out of the uh, fatherland so to speak <laughs> now under the hood we have this wonderful little engine bay which I've shown in detail before but now is part of the finished kit see it all goes together very well and position the wheels and let it take a spin so uh, definitely uh, recommend this kit uh, you can do I've seen uh, some other build video videos where uh, you know people go and put uh, different wheels on there low profile tires you know aftermarket stuff uh, there, there's quite a bit you can do with this uh, because not only do the, do the components go together well uh, they go together uh, in, in a pretty solid way, so you, you don't really have a, a delicate thing. Under the hood, yes, there are some tiny parts which are delicate, but it's under the hood, and you're not going to be sticking your finger in there, so so that works out just fine. Um, and that's it. That, that wraps it up. So, like I said, real happy with the way this one came out. Um, got to, uh, you know, kind of go down memory lane a little bit, and... Uh, I like it. I like it. It's and it's done. So, as always, when you build something, make it your own. Uh, put a little creativity in there. Uh, you know, if you want to modify a little bit, even if it's something as simple as as doing your own uh, color scheme or color preference, yeah, go for it. It's your model. Build it the way you want. And that's it. So, I'll see you for the next build. And thank you for watching. And. Uh, Again, with this build, they always try to do a little bit something with, with each car I do, or each kit I do, I should say. So, uh, always a little something to learn with, with each outing. All right.